All right, 20 minutes before the top of the hour, former President Donald Trump could take, could take his presidential immunity claim to the Supreme Court. In fact, we all expect him to after the D.C. Federal Court of Appeals rejected his bid in the 2020 election case. He wanted immunity, of course. The court saying, quote, former President Trump has become citizen Trump. Any executive immunity that may have protected him while he served as president no longer protects him against his prosecution. Here to react, Fox News legal editor Kerry Kubek Urban. Uh, Kerry, so the 3 0 decision they say is significant because it's so massive and pervasive. Will that affect any type of appeal to the Supreme Court? It really depends, but it is, to your point, a case of first impression. This is the first time a court has ever found that a president is not immune from federal criminal prosecution for acts committed during office. And so because of the nature of that, uh, of this, and, and obviously the implications for future presidents and their potential ability to govern, it's possible the Supreme Court weighs in. But Brian, you know, they don't have to. The Supreme Court has full discretion as to whether they take up a case or not. They typically take less than 1% of the petitions submitted to them each year. So it's really up in the air as to whether the Supreme Court is going to get involved in this or not. So can you give us an idea of the procedure? Because they put, and you would know better than me, some type of time limit on when they can go up because the president, they want to rush the president to court. The president wants to take his time, obviously. So they, they put some type of time limit on his appeal. They did. The D.C. Appeals Court said that he has by Monday to decide whether he's going to appeal or not. And if he, in writing, submits to uh, the federal appeals court that just ruled against him that he's planning to appeal to the Supreme Court, they will stay the decision pending the Supreme Court proceedings. Now, this is where it gets interesting. The Supreme Court, though, is not on any kind of timeline or deadline. And so they could um, they could rule quickly. They could not. And what that would look like, though, Brian, is they would likely set at some point a briefing schedule as to whether they should even take up the case or not. And again, it's completely up to them when they want to do that, if they want to do it, and how long that will take. All right, so we'll get an answer. And if the Supreme Court takes it, they'll wait. If not, let's say the Supreme Court goes, I don't want to do it. I read the, I read the three judge opinion, so we're not going to take it. When do you think the trial would start then? Well, you know, it was originally supposed to start in the beginning of March. I think we'd look at possibly later spring. Uh, we also have this big ballot case with Trump, with the, the states that have removed ballot, uh, Trump from the ballot happening on Thursday. The Supreme Court's hearing that in just tomorrow, actually. And so I think probably later spring. But again, um, if the, pres the former president appeals to the Supreme Court, that will delay things in that we will then be waiting for the Supreme Court to set schedules and timelines for uh, Trump and his team right. and, of course, DOJ to submit their filings. Okay. I'm not sure there's an answer to this, but when the Supreme Court decides to take or not take the case, is that up to the Chief Justice in a case like this, or do they take have everyone weigh in? You only need four yes votes to take up a case at the Supreme Court. Now, the public will never know who those four yes votes are, and that's where it becomes very interesting, a game of math in a lot of ways, because obviously, Brian, if you have, say, the liberal wing of the court plus a Chief Justice Roberts saying yes, that could indicate that they are interested in potentially maybe ruling against Trump's arguments. On the other hand, if your four yes votes are the more conservative wing of the court, that also signal that could signal the opposite result. But we wouldn't know who is voting yes if they in, if they decide to take up the case. All right. And the next case is uh, tomorrow. So uh, uh, put your keep your ring around because uh, tomorrow the Colorado <laughs> case uh, gets heard and we'll see if the, all these other cases, all these other challenges go by the wayside. Thanks, Carrie. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmeade. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.